Right, so a little while ago, I made a video called Catfished for a Green Card, where we looked at two couples from 90 Day Fiancé's spin-off series, 90 Day Fiancé, The Other Way. We looked at 51-year-old Laura and her 29-year-old Tunisian boyfriend, Aladdin, and 60-year-old Jenny, who had been catfished by someone she thought was a 25-year-old named Michael, but was actually a 31-year-old man from India called Samit. Even though she had been catfished, Jenny had been talking to Samit for so long that she decided to give him a chance and ended up falling in love with him anyway. Now in 90 Day Fiancé The Other Way, rather than the foreign partner coming to live in America, the American partner goes to live abroad. So at the end of the video, Laura was getting ready to meet Aladdin in Qatar and Jenny was preparing to move to India to be with Samit. Well, a few months have now passed and the season has finally reached its dramatic conclusion. So today we're going to be looking at what happened to Jenny when she finally decided to make the move to Samit's home country of India. I'll also be covering what happened to Laura and Aladdin in a video very soon, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss that one. But today is all about the roller coaster of drama that is the story of Samit and Jenny. So today we're starting off on the day that Jenny is set to leave America. Yeah, I mean, I have fears that, yeah, maybe the Samit's family will get him to go back to them. So it's a risk, I'm taking a chance. But so is he, he is too, he's choosing me over them. That is a very big deal, almost unheard of. My heart tells me Smith is worth it. So things were pretty easy for Jenny leaving. She sold most of her possessions, packed everything else up and left. Her kids and grandkids seemed understandably quite confused by the whole thing, but they supported her decision to go anyway. For Samit though, things weren't quite so easy. Although Samit didn't have to move country, like Jenny said, there was a big risk that his family wouldn't approve of the relationship. Yeah, I'm excited. Today is the day when Jenny will arrive in India. I'm going to the airport in a few hours in order to pick her up. I found an apartment for me and Jenny so we can live together. And there's one last thing I need to do. Today I'm going to tell my parents I'm moving out of the house because I got a job in Mumbai. But the plan is that I'm going to live with Jenny here in Gurgaon and that is just I need to like them. Samit made it pretty clear in the first few episodes that his family wouldn't approve of the relationship at all, so it wasn't even worth explaining it to them. He said they wouldn't understand why he would choose to be with an older American woman, so rather than try to explain it, he decided to not tell them at all, but that wasn't so easy. Where is he? I don't see him. Oh, don't do this to me. Where are you? It's been five years to me. Why aren't you here? Where are you? Jenny. Oh, oh my God. There you are. Hi. Oh my Hi. God, I was so scared. I didn't think you were going to come and I was going to be lost in India. We're back hey, together again. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. I was running late to get Jenny just because my parents were keep questioning me, questioning me. I don't think they believe me that I'm moving out of the job. I'm lying because if my parents were gonna find out that Jenny is here and they're gonna stop me. Family approval was the first serious hurdle that the couple had to overcome, but it was far from the only one. Another big issue that the couple faced was going out together in public and having to deal with the social perception of their unusual relationship. When me and uh, Jenny will go out, the people will gonna notice a lot. You come out from here, okay? They will keep on looking at us like, uh, why are these two people are uh, together, one foreign lady and one Indian guy. I uh, might be they were thinking that I'm the tour guide or something, but the way we're gonna move, like ha holding hand each other, like they were wondering, oh, wow. Pretty much everywhere the couple go across the 20 episodes, people are staring at them. Most of the time, it makes Jenny uncomfortable, but it's relatively harmless, and Samit doesn't seem to mind too much. But one day, Samit decided to take Jenny out to meet his friends, and things got out of hand. Buddy, please, don't mind. Please don't mind, you are a good guy, you're making us laugh, but still. Request from my side, please. You are bothering us a lot. I keep avoiding that, but you're saying a lot of things she don't understand, but I do understand that, and it's disrespectful. That guy just turned around and kept looking at us and pointing towards us. He's trying to be a cool guy in front of his friends. But when he start saying something about a Jenny, like, Look at this foreign lady, how much she gonna drink? Then I lose my mind. I, I will stand up and fight for her every time. 
You know, this is a point where it clicked for me that Samit really might be genuine about his feelings for Jenny. You know, when I first made part one, it seemed like such a cliched story. A catfish from a foreign country talking to an old, desperate, lonely American wanting to take advantage of the country's visa process. But literally everything Samit does for Jenny after she arrives in India makes me think that I was wrong for making that assumption. I mean, I think everyone made the same assumption at the time, and given the circumstances, I think it was a fair one to make. But as the series went on, I just felt more and more like I got it wrong. I explained in the first video how the visa suspicions don't really change for the American partner, because rather than coming across to the US with a K-1 visa, like in 90 Day Fiancé, the couple get married in a foreign country first, but the foreign partner still comes across to the US with a K-3 visa. So essentially, even though the American partner's gone abroad, both routes give the foreign partner the chance to get a visa. But Summit ends up doing so much for Jenny, it's really hard to think that that's all he's after. I can't show everything that he's done across the 20 episodes, but he got her an apartment he couldn't afford, he risked lying to his family, and he even quit his job to spend more time with Jenny. So with the couple now living together, Samit decided it was finally time to propose. But the process for getting married was far from easy. They went to see a family lawyer and were told that in India, when a marriage is proposed, a notice is sent to the permanent address of the people who are getting married. Unfortunately, Samit's permanent residence was his family home. Obviously, Samit hasn't even told his parents about Jenny, let alone his plans to get married. So this was devastating news. We didn't expect that, that this will gonna happen because sending a notice to my parents' house that we are getting married makes me scared because if they find out everything gonna get ruined, they were the worst thing I ever heard. I think Samit was obviously disappointed that he wasn't going to be able to marry Jenny, but I think he felt worse that he had let her down. Like, she had sacrificed everything for this. After six years of talking with Samit, she's finally come to India, and other than her family back home, pretty much all she has is Samit and her dreams of getting married. So understandably, it was a hard pill to swallow for her. Who can maintain a long-distance relationship for six years? Who? Oh, it's, it's almost impossible, but we did it. So here I come, we're gonna get married, we're gonna be together. We love each other and then, oh, what a blow. What a blow we just suffered right now. People need to understand. Everybody need to understand why. We love each other. Nobody can keep us apart. Whatever I need to do, we'll do. He says he'll do pretty much anything for Jenny, and he does make a lot of sacrifices for her. But this ends up becoming quite a frustrating theme throughout the episodes. He just sits in the middle the entire time, never making his mind up between choosing either his family or choosing Jenny. It's like he's on a never-ending quest to keep them both satisfied, and you just know that it can only last for so long. I know my family is suspicious about me, and the only way to make them satisfied is just to go and meet them. Okay, jaldi aunga. Okay, bye. I want to marry Jenny, but in order to keep this lie alive, then I have to go back home. I know that she's not gonna like it. And he was right, she really didn't. I can't be left alone in that apartment. I don't know what I'm gonna do or what to do. I'm not gonna accept that. Thankfully, Jenny eventually came around to the idea. I guess she didn't really have much of a choice, but either way, Samit went off to see his family, leaving Jenny all alone in the apartment. After almost a week of being separated, Samit decided to sneak out of his parents' house for a few hours to spend some time with Jenny and find out what she's been up to since he's been gone. What you did, like, when I wasn't here? i just been at the apartment. I've just been bored. I even had to leave a couple times. What? You leave a couple of nine by yourself. Yeah. I went to go see about getting a job. Well, I also went to the cyber uh, internet and talked talk to Christina. When did you go over there? When it's night here, it's day there. So it yeah. was her morning. So, wait, did you left at night? Yeah. Seriously? Culture shock is a big theme running throughout this series with couples. I think quite often the partner goes to the foreign country without learning anything about the culture. And usually it ends with that partner doing or saying something disrespectful or struggling to adapt. But this is quite a lot more serious than that. What makes you so brave that you left the house at night? What am I supposed to do? Keep sitting in the Maybe apartment? doesn't mean well, that you can leave the house at well, night. Then come back home then. Stop leaving me alone or I'm gonna keep doing these things. You know, it's very serious thing like you left the home at night. I'm telling you about just because I'm worried for your safety and security. I love you. I know she's pretty upset, but she need to understand that 
It's not safe for a blonde hair, blue eye, white lady to roam around at night in Indian throat. I think she got the picture after this. So for the rest of the time that she was living alone, she stayed safe and only went out during the day. After a week or so, Samit returned and not long after, someone unexpected showed up at the door. Yo. Oh. So what are we cooking? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm having a freaking heart attack right now. Oh my God, what are you doing I'm here? here? I'm here! What are you doing here? Oh my God, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Oh my God! Oh my God. With her mother having been in India for a few months, Christina wanted to check in, see how she's doing, see where she's living, make sure Samit is looking after her and find out if the relationship is genuine. Given it was Christina's first time meeting Samit, they decided to go out for a nice dinner, which was going well up until the point where Christina asked when Samit was gonna tell his family about Jenny. I was thinking that I'm gonna tell my parents about it. But then there will be a big trauma. It would make me emotional and I will say, sorry, Jenny, I, I cannot be with you. And I don't want to do that. That's why I'm hiding. So if they come, if they come and you're like, you see them start crying, like your mom and your father, you're going to say, sorry, Jenny. Yeah. I can't do this. And you're going to go back with your family. Oh, goodness. Interesting. I'm hiding. Understandably, Jenny was pretty hurt by this and it did little to convince Christina that Samit was serious about the relationship. I think Christina knew that her mum had invested so much time and effort into the relationship that she probably wasn't going to leave Samit. So instead, she gave her mum some pretty strong advice. Don't be upset. I miss you, mum. I miss you too. I miss you too. I want to love you so much. I really hope for your sake, mom, that you're right. I don't want to see you hurt again. You need to stand up and you make him be a man. You make him grow the up and take care of you. If I he wants you here, he needs to grow up. I will. So Jenny decided to finally confront Samit to tell him that he needs to stand up to his parents. It's been six years of talking and now she's finally committed and moved to India to be with him. So it's his turn to show that he's serious about things. And this is where we find out the truth. Yeah, I love you, that's so true. Do you feel that? Yeah, I know you love me, but I need you to be like stronger and stand up for your, for me and stand up to them. Why? Well, I cannot choose one over another. You have to. What are you thinking? She'd give up a lot for me and keep on thinking, then we will gonna get married. Make a damn decision. It is very unfair to her. I have a big secret, which I was hiding from Jenny. And the big secret is that I'm married. Yup, I know, I literally couldn't believe it either. This is why he couldn't tell his parents about Jenny. This is why I noticed being served on the house was the worst thing he had ever heard. In the week where he went home and left Jenny all to herself, he was probably off seeing his wife as well. How messed up is that? I really wanted to finish this story in this one video, but honestly, the rest of the story has so much entertaining drama, I just couldn't cut it down. So next time, in the final part of the Jenny and Samit story, we're gonna be looking at the moment where Samit finally tells Jenny the truth, which is hands down the most heart-wrenching scene in 1980 on say history. Not only that, but we're gonna be looking at everything that follows, with not just Samit's family finding out, but Samit's wife's family finding out too. And they are furious. Everything kicks off and gets absolutely wild, so if you wanna make sure you don't miss out, make sure you're subscribed down below. And hopefully I'll see you there. Until then, links to my Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and other social media will be down below. So feel free to drop by in between uploads to say hi. As always, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.